Thank you everybody for joining today's uh, for joining uh, attending today's live webcast. Time to innovate, accelerating beyond your traditional business to the cloud. My name is Kim Harrison and I am the market development manager here at Concerto Cloud Services and I will be your moderator for today. Presenting on today's live webcast will be Rochelle Coleman, Director of Marketing and Partner Strategy here at Concerto Cloud Services. So before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping items. After, uh, after the presentation, we will have a brief Q&A period. To submit a question, click on the question button and type your question. We will try and answer as many questions as possible, and if not, we will happily respond to you after the webcast. For those of you in today's present uh, who wish to see uh, and access today's presentation, it will be made available to you via on demand and will be posted on the Concerto Keep Calm webcast landing page for future viewing and of course sharing. Lastly, please provide feedback at the end of today's live webcast. Web, uh, we always welcome feedback and greatly appreciate it as it helps us structure um, our webcast series going forward. So with that, um, let's get started. Rochelle, take it away. Great. Thank you, Kim, and thanks for everybody joining today. This is going to be a quick session um, in the spirit of getting you back to your business, um, but we're going to focus today on the concept of innovation in the cloud, and as you can see, we're going to look for some key considerations as you evolve your company into a cloud-centric business. Uh, this is not an if it is a when at this point, and so we're going to take some time and just take a step back on what other partners have done and how they've gotten to that cloud-centric orientation in their business. We're going to go through a few tips and tricks on how to get started. Uh, this is based on uh, kind of our partner ecosystem and how we've seen varying partners of different types in technology evolve their business accordingly. Um, where you can actually reach out and find support. You could be in research mode right now. You could be uh, trying to um, you know, focus on a specific area of your business to move into the cloud. Regardless of where you are, um, you, know, you have to be savvy, you have to be research-based, and so we'll go through some of that. And then we're just going to close very quickly with um, an understanding of who we are. Um, not so much from you know, who we are and what we sell, but um, how we've really oriented our, our way around a partner ecosystem. Uh, we're very focused on the enabling of partners, and so there, there's probably some interesting tidbits in there. And then we'll take any final Q&A, and we should have you out of here in about 30 minutes. So, you know, we've termed this quick 30 as a tradition to innovation um, scenario. And if you look at the traditional efforts of technology, the basics don't change. Customers are still looking for exemplary service. They're still looking for a long-term trusted advisor in their organization. And they still want to focus on driving innovation. They don't want to be in a position where they are moving from vendor to vendor. They have gone through the 90s and the 2000s of these three-year cycles of software deployment, and they want something different. And that is the focus around the cloud, and that is the reason why um, that innovation is happening today. And so we know that this is a cultural shift just as much as it is a technology shift. And so from any partner or any partner moving forward that we work with, we focus on some very critical things. You know, you would think, you know, academically and logistically that you'd sit down and say, do we have the hardware? Do we have the software? Do we have a company that, um, you know, is going to have our, our network under underway? But if you take out all the technology and you just think about the cultural considerations for cloud, there's some certain characteristics that you should be starting to evolve as a partner in the cloud. One of them is that willingness to constantly evolve. Cloud is not a target that once you get there, you sit there for three years until the next target comes. Cloud is an evolving, consistent, constant, iterative conversation with your customer. Um, the customer is hopefully growing, therefore there's more workloads coming into the cloud. Um, they may have dipped their toe in the water of cloud with you to start, but they're, they're testing you and then they want to test you by giving you more. And so that constant conversation you're going to have with the customer is key. You have to look constantly at the competition, and we don't mean yearly 
monthly, we don't mean quarterly, we mean daily, daily in their Twitter feeds, daily in their, um, you know, their LinkedIn profiles, what press they're getting. Um, and competition is not just the core group of, you know, boutique value-added resellers or the ISVs in your industry anymore. Uh, that transformation of managed services and the growth of, of cloud services in general has really made everybody viable to compete in this space. As long as someone has the ability to acquire a cloud company, the ability to buy hardware and set themselves up in a uh, cloud um, you know, organization, then they have the ability to transform into the cloud. And so <coughs> your ability to differentiate yourself is key. So you want to surround yourself with an ecosystem of innovators. You want to be in a place where you're not, you think you're in the cloud, but you're already behind. You want to have forward thinkers in your organization. We, we have someone in our organization that we call the nutty professor because, you know, he is our future. He is our headspace on what is coming next. Um, as, a, as a leadership team, we don't sit and talk about what is the present. Uh, we talk about what is to come. And we are about three to five months ahead of ourselves, which is a changing world in the world of cloud. So for someone like yourself looking to evolve that, you have to surround yourself by that type of innovation. And just to be clear, innovation doesn't mean revolution. You know, the best things in the world in technology have just been iterated. If we think about, you know, um, the world of Dell as an example and an, an analogy <coughs> to the PC, um, you know, evolution in our technology world, they weren't the first to market. They weren't necessarily the best to market, but they became that, that third or fourth version and they could iterate on that innovation and became one of the most innovative approaches on how you sell or build and sell a, a computer in the world. So if you take that analogy and apply it to cloud, um, you know, people aren't looking to boil the ocean. You're just looking to service your customers properly and you need to start with your base and what they need out of their business. So I think I've, I've stated it's, it's going to be the customers that drive that cloud conversation. We're not sticking cloud out in the market, you know, the, the hyperscalers of Amazon and Microsoft and Google are not putting cloud out and waiting for people to, you know, if we build it, they will come. It's absolutely the reverse. You know, cloud has been generated and delivered as a result of customer demand. Customers are getting that perspective around cloud from others if they're not getting it from you today. Um, they are <laughs> quickly having um, uh, proposals and opportunities and pilots and POCs in front of them. They are having the value prop talk to them constantly, whether it's in their digital world, whether it's being served up in their, you know, with their morning coffee and the local Twitter feed they are reading. But regardless, they are getting that message and they are going to come back to you as a trusted advisor and they want that answer. So they want to know if you have a great way for them to try this out, a low cost option for them to really understand how to get their stuff into the cloud, to have an assessment, um, and to understand that whatever they're putting and where they're putting it is completely secure, completely compliant, and, um, and, and completely guaranteed around a strong service level agreement. So we know that globally this is not a cloud, uh, this is not an environment that's going to go away. I mean, we're in 2016 ready to turn the corner in 2017, so in a short 12 to 18 months from now, this global market is going to be worth 200 billion. And when we say 200 billion, we mean um, everything, everything tied to cloud. That's your SaaS, your platform as a service, your infrastructure. It's a very big, big, big number. <coughs> Just a piece of that can be highly profitable to a partner who has historically um, sold the traditional hardware software model over the last 15, 20 years. And these are the four things that you really need to kind of build a plan around. If you're going to be the same kind of cloud provider, are you going to differentiate on service? Are you going to differentiate on your SLA? Are you going to differentiate on the amount of applications you offer your customer? Are you going to differentiate just by virtue of the fact that you've had these long-time customers, you do a bunch of other things for them, and you're simply going to add cloud to that mix? You're simply en enabling them not to go anywhere else for cloud. Um, because as sure as can be, as soon as they go somewhere else for cloud, that stickiness with that cloud provider as they grow their managed services with them is going to eventually detract from the amount of business they have with you. So differentiating and making clear to your existing base that you have a cloud 
um, opportunity for them to take advantage of is key. You want to really start from within. So, you know, you, you, we see it all the time, people putting messaging out there in the market, we're in the cloud, we're in the cloud, we're in the cloud. Well, guess what? People are going to take you up <laughs> on that opportunity, and if you haven't optimized your operations, as quick as you've gained a customer is as quick as you can lose that customer. And the reputation in the market of losing a customer is far greater than, you know, gaining hundreds uh, in, inside your, your walls. So you really need to focus internally and understand whether you're, um, you know, you're ready to capture that cloud revenue. Are you truly in a position where your systems, your people, your comp plans, and your culture aligns to being a cloud-centric business? <coughs> in the world of savvy, savvy, savvy digital and social uh, media, um, you know, many of us have lived and breathed in the world where uh, we can remember, um, you know, sending a big box of something to someone in a direct mail campaign and having them open it up and thinking that that mug or that Yeti or whatever it is would be so great and would help them move their, their positioning forward with us. People have made their decision in, you know, the first 20 minutes of their day on what they're going to do and the decisions they're going to make thanks to social media and digital and what gets served up. So for you, you have to have a plan in mind that is going to put and break through your messaging to your local base and your prospects. And <coughs> that modernization doesn't necessarily have to be a high price or high ticket. People can enter the, the, the Twitter universe, the LinkedIn universe in a pretty low cost way. And with content being king and the ability to get out there on a regular basis, that's what we mean by modernization and just having this constant iterative viewpoint of messaging out to the market. Um, very different than these big blasts of campaigns that, you know, by the time it hits a customer, they've already made their decision via the social efforts of three other of your competitors. And you have to be in a position that you have, whoever plays the role of your chief customer officer, it it could be the president of the company, it could be a, a, a fully burdened headcount in your organization, but someone comes to, to sign up for a cloud scenario with you, they're looking to sign up for lifetime customer value, and they're not going anywhere, they're paying month over month, and their exit is much easier than it's been before, and they're not looking for a point in time with you, they're looking for years with you, and you want to embrace that loyalty and make sure you have a plan around it. What's interesting is that cloud is moving so fast that we're already in, and I would argue even beyond the second wave and into the third wave, and I'll explain that in the following slide. But in this, we need to understand that you know 68% of organizations today are using some form of cloud. Now that could be anything from people, you know, swiping their credit card or giving a credit card into a you know simple marketing application for a small company. It could be a very large automation effort around ERP or um, CRM. Uh, it could be something as simple as um, you know buying promotional items through the cloud or you know bringing stock photo through the cloud. Whatever it is, though, you know we're getting to the point where three quarters of the universe the commercial universe is in some type of cloud. Those partners that are still living in the traditional um, approach of here's my services, um, here's my project plan, here's my bench, are seeing still you know, traditional profits of two to five times for their EBITDA. Those that are cloud focused and are changing the face of what they do and maybe a bit of a hybrid of traditional and cloud are seeing far more double to triple um, the EBITDA returns relative to their services offerings. So that's just something to keep in mind <laughs> as you decide what your portfolio is going to look like and that we're already in that second wave of cloud adoption. So anyone who's not in that, you know, on the cloud train right now is, is definitively behind the curve. We also know that of those 68%, this is the true opportunity is that they don't have a mature cloud strategy in place. So to the point of they're swiping a credit card for this app, um, you know, I think the latest stat is, um, you know, CIOs and IT um, managers, you know, don't know 70 to 80 percent of the applications that are being used in the cloud because they're very, very decentralized and they haven't taken control of what it means to have, you know, marketing leaders, sales leaders, 
finance leaders make their own choice about a cloud application. That represents a huge opportunity for someone like yourself to come in and strategically put a plan for these organizations together. You know, most of them are opportunistic. Um, you know, they're, they're really um, ad hoc. Uh, they might be doing something repeatable with one single contract with an application. But, you know, very few are, are at that optimized or fully managed um, area. Most of them are just really um, taking opportunities. They might be trying their luck on the roulette wheel of, of hyperscaled private or public clouds. They might be dabbling in some test dev, but they're truly not aligned around a key mature cloud strategy. And what's complicated matters more is <laughs> the world of private and public are converging. So we, as Concerto, we don't talk to folks about, well, you want to stick this in a private or if you want to stick this in a public. It's about what these workloads are doing, what they need, and then where to place them. And as public clouds become more secure and more opportunities to put you know, um, uh, mission-critical cloud workloads in there, and as private clouds become um, more robust in terms of their performance and their single tenancy and their opportunity to do things like DevOps on them and database administration, it doesn't become a conversation of, well, we're in the cloud. It's really a multi-cloud strategy. And that whole concept of being able to move workloads beti between private and public environments is very important. And so not only is the cloud the topic of conversation, but we've already flown past this singular cloud methodology and we move straight to this multi-cloud strategy. And so the majority of customers, however, whatever size, small, medium, large, are, are becoming savvy enough to talk about, can you put my workloads into multi-cloud environments? You know, the, the most amount of information we get is from our own customer base. And, you know, what is telling to us is what are the types of operational benefits that our organizations that are in our cloud today realizing. So you can see from these stats, I mean, a good chunk of them, you know, the obvious recognition of what value cloud brings to folks is reduced IT infrastructure costs. But you've got some very interesting data here. You know, close to 40% of our customer base talks about improved accessibility. So ironically, they're being managed, fully managed by ourselves as a, as a uh, cloud service provider, yet they are saying they have improved accessibility to their environments and improved reporting and infrastructure that they can access, which is, you know, completely counterintuitive to folks that are protecting their workloads today in their own environment and actually struggling with things like security, compliancy standards, and um, performance issues. And you can take a look at those statistics for yourself, um, and we'll have an opportunity to see that and share with other folks uh, when the recording is out there. And we just simply ask, like, how are you using the cloud today? And specifically because we just happen to be a cloud provider that's focused on, and our, our rich background is, is grounded in mission critical applications you know, 80% or more are coming to us because they have these critical apps. They have high performance, high user base, lots of um, customization. They're not in a position where they don't want to be handheld through that, and that's uh, why people come to us. But we've got a good chunk of people that are coming to us for fully management, full management of non-mission critical, for web apps, for just pre-prod and, and testing. Um, the reality is <coughs> they want that trusted advisor, and you, as a partner of a strong cloud provider can act and re repeat that relationship with that customer. Partners are also adapting their business models. So if we, if we go back circa 1995 to 2005, you've got folks who are, you know, partners making a ton of money on project services, right? We were, here's my billable bench, this is what I need to do, I'm migrating this software from this environment to that environment, we're going to go to the next version of this application, we need someone to come in, we're going to do an RFP, whoever gets the best price, get their hourly rate down, we're going to do it. That doesn't, that doesn't disappear. There's still a lot of migration happening in the world. There's a lot of services opportunities there. But <laughs> when you move forward and up the spectrum or around the circle, and you add those managed services, and then you actually add some of your own IP from a perspective of service offer for offerings that you have, um, maybe a bit of actual tooling and reporting that you can offer business intelligence to your customer base, suddenly you are 
um, you know, rapidly adopting a business model that your customers will embrace, which is a very important evolution around the cloud. So let me give you an example of a success story of a value-added reseller. So this is your standard um, reseller that ha has been very successful over the last 15 to 20 years uh, driving partnerships with their customers. They've done a variety of things. They could be doing switches and routers. They could be selling them their latest office equipment. They could have done all their break fix. They could have been 15 years ago, the guy, wrote, guy or girl rotating with the disc uh, into each um, you know, CD slots or DVD slot to try and install software. As that is drying up, you know, you have to focus on, um, you know, what is, what is going to be the financially viable model for you moving forward. And this VAR specifically understood that by building their own cloud offering and using a back end such as Concerto or any other cloud service provider that has a fully managed offering, the ability for them to be powered by this type of cloud got them to market very quickly. So they could very easily evaluate across the partner business. They you know, signed a partner agreement within 30 days, and they've increased their revenue by 35% in one year. This immediately affected the health of their P&L, immediately put them in the cloud business. There was really no risk involved because you know, there was only a, a, a margin play. There was only a transaction. There was only an interaction. They got all the enablement and all the benefit of learning from this cloud provider about uh, how to market and sell in the cloud. And the only ups there was only upside um, tied to this agreement because as they made money, obviously us as a cloud service provider makes money. So it's really going in down to these partnerships and not building your own and focusing on those who do, do it best and bringing that channel together is truly the best and most efficient way to get to the cloud. So let's go to some tips and tricks um, to get started. Uh, we've got um, a few things that we would say immediately that we would want to make sure that you focus on. One, again, start in your own backyard. What are the products and applications you want to sell? Or do you want to simply start with table stakes and get your customers aligned to the fact that you are offering them infrastructure? Take their applications and their products and make a play to allow them and enable them to get into the cloud versus offering direct products like um, you know, reselling a, an accounting application or reselling a CRM application. Focus on your customer base first and what you wish to sell them as part of your cloud offering. Engage, and this is, you know, product managers, um, doesn't matter how small or big a company you are, you, you can solicit the help of um, your, at the executive level and also anyone who's managing your product and sit in that war room environment and just think about what are the best opportunities for you to drive this type of offering. And then finally, do your research and identify the cloud partners and do a side-by-side -side comparison. Not all cloud partners are created equal. Um, you have to look deeper within their SLAs. You know, if you look at some of the public cloud providers who, by the way, we partner very definitively with and manage a lot of the workloads that folks don't want to manage themselves in public cloud. But research and identify and be clear. I mean, we know that 99.95 is not 99.99. That might be okay. That actually might be perfectly fine. But if you have a critical healthcare application that one of your customers has and wants to put in the cloud, you sure as heck want to make sure that that 99.99 is in place for them. Um, and ask for those references. Ask for the telephone references and do your diligence to make sure that you're, um, you're fine. I would even go so far as to say, um, you know, if you have a simplistic notion of signing an agreement with more than one partner, try your luck with a, with a couple of them. I think you'll very quickly see that the services of a, you know, high um, kind of premium come standard type cloud provider is very different than dabbling with um, a, a public type cloud provider. Different experiences both warrant and are valuable for different reasons. And finally, engage in a financial um, model conversation with the partner. So make sure that you know before an agreement is even signed, that you've sat down and you're very clear and clean on how is this model going to work for you? Are you going with the referral type model where you actually aren't interested in keeping that customer? You want to just take your money and go on to the next? Are you wanting to make this 
partnership more of a white label where you are really the ownership of that cloud and everything um, that the customer sees is under the label of your partnership? Or are you going to do a joint powered by where you have the opportunity to focus on um, a joint go-to-market with this cloud provider and yourself to get even more breadth and, and um, a mind share in the market? Wanted to show you an example of um, you know, how we assess um, our, our partners today. So we go through, and this is just an example, we have a very, quite a comprehensive view of how we go through a questionnaire about our partners. These are the types of things we ask ourselves on, are we going to partner with this, um, with this organization? You know, how much of their uh, total revenue today is represented as on-prem? Um, you know, what types of recurring services do they have for their customers today? Is, our, is their sales team fully compensated to drive cloud sales? Do you have a financial plan in place? Any vertical cloud strategy? Um, an existing base that we could both target together to move these customers to the cloud? And, you know, what type of contract terms do you have for your customer? If every every customer you have is a five-year plus contract with very high maintenance levels, that's a cultural um, kind of aha moment for us to think about whether we are culturally aligned on what it means to be flexible in the cloud and some of the terms that you have to offer in the cloud today. So, you know, some of the research and support that we would recommend, uh, especially because we are both a 451 partner and a Cisco partner, we have personally gained a lot of value of doing some reading with some of the resources that you see on this slide. Um, and obviously, these are things that we can offer up to you to kind of do your, your research. These are, you know, very <coughs> recent assessments of kinds of, the, of a channel and ecosystem um, and really, uh, you know, the focus on, on on anything tied to the Cisco partner ecosystem um, and beyond um, on, on where people are going and what they're do doing in cloud. So let me just really quickly, uh, just quickly let you know what who we are. We are obviously a fully managed cloud service provider. I think I made that clear. Uh, premium comes standard for us. So we are the folks that handhold, provide that white glove treatment for those who want to really journey to the cloud properly. 90% um, of our revenue today comes from partners. We, we grow our partner ecosystem. We're um, adding partners uh, each and every month into our membership. Um, and we are, uh, you know, 100 plus strong and part of a larger organization um, who is, has a rich history in Dynamics uh, ERP, Microsoft ERP, NetSuite, and CRM. We do have an innovative partner network program where we focus on enablement. So just as much as people want to sign on and have a contract about how to generate um, you know, our, our, our time in the cloud together, we do feel compelled to need to enable and educate our partners and down to the sales team level on what it means to sell in the cloud, and we offer a lot of support around that. As you can see, we are our strategic Cisco partner with a, a pile of other partnerships with Microsoft, NetApp, VMware, Amazon, and Equinix. And I've mentioned our, our mission critical. 87% of our workloads are mission critical applications. And we do have the uptime and track record that we like to, uh, like to maintain. What do our partners say? Uh, you can just read this quote. We, we've, we have biannual partner advisory councils to make sure that we are really being self-critical about how our partners are feeling within our cloud ecosystem. Um, but we, we focus on trust, we focus on responsiveness, and uh, we focus on their success. We get up every day and focus on our partner's success. Um, we have a mishmash of VARs and ISVs and managed service providers. Uh, we have folks that are knowledgeable and have built uh, solutions on lots of different platforms. Um, we have to be flexible and we have to be willing to, in some cases, try new things and go down the path in this journey together with, um, with our um, partner organizations. So what can we do in terms of next steps? What can you do in terms of next steps? You know, be prepared to answer customer cloud questions. I'm sure you already are. 
um, but have your FAQ ready, and if possible, actually be proactive. What we teach our partners right off the bat as they're entering cloud for the first time is to just have that one slide in their deck or have that one conversation point or that one talking point that asks folks what their cloud thinking or thoughts are today. And guaranteed that will open up a pile of other conversations of what they're doing, where they are, um, and if they can begin to trust you as they go down that path. Leverage the tips and tricks that we have included in this slide deck and, you know, go straight in and pull them down for yourself. <coughs> um, engage a cloud partner and begin that journey. <coughs> My apologies. And be sure to take a cloud partner assessment. And of course, we want your opinion. Uh, we want you to be part of our next webcast if you have the availability. And uh, we want you to contact us whenever you're able to, uh, both personally, you can uh, contact me at any point in time, or through our partner at concertocloud.com alias. So with that, I think I'm going to turn it back to Kim and see if there are any questions. Kim? Perfect. Thanks, Rochelle. Um, so that was fantastic um, and very educational for our group, so thank you very much. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to open it up for questions. Um, I'd just like to take a few minutes to remind everyone that if you have a question, please submit it via um, the question button. And what I'll do is I'll just give you a moment or two and uh, feel free to type the questions in there now. Okay. Um, Rochelle, it looks like we have when it said, um, so a partner is asking, when you say listen to the opportunity, what does that mean? So that's, that's a good question and I think I touched on some uh, digital and social elements of that. Really what I mean by that is having your ear to the ground at every point in time. So you can't step in and out of the cloud world. You can't be there for the odd you know, Twitter feed that comes in and then not be there for a month. You, you yourself have to be present and you have to have a listening ear. So in some cases, we recommend our partners to have that designated ear out there understanding what's going on at all points in time. So there are acquisitions happening daily. There are new products being launched. I think, you know, AWS is launching a new product every two weeks. I believe, um, <laughs> you need to really focus on um, that ear to the ground. Um, you know, you will miss the opportunity. There are, you know, speaking candidly, our, our marketing organization as a cloud service provider keeps our ear to the ground. Our sales folks are constantly delivering on what our um, competitors and our ecosystem is doing. We feel that we represent a, um, almost an extra ear for our partners. So if we see something going on, we have partners in enterprise content management. If we see some, something going on in, in that environment, we will reach out to that partner and give them that information. So really it's about, you know, ear to the wall, ear to the ground, focused and dedicated and proactive effort on listening all the time. Okay, perfect. Um, are companies uh, starting in public, private, or hybrid as their first step into the cloud? So I think uh, that's a very good question because it really depends on the customer, the size of the customer, and what their mission critical or non-mission critical needs are. Um, I would say it's, it's kind of a trick question in the fact that I think you can go any way. I think getting, dipping a toe in the water of cloud is what's most important. Getting people to realize that they're actually in a more secure environment to be in the cloud than outside of the cloud as it stands right now. The majority of the breaches you see see in the market today are the result of people's um, or personal infrastructure or their uh, private cloud infrastructure um, and, and not being managed properly. So when you have an SLA in place, it doesn't matter if you're going, you know, hybrid or you're just dipping your toe. Where I think it's most important is when you've got companies that have a, a mix of the things that they do. So they may have mission critical, they may have uh, web-based workloads, they may have test dev. Um, I think you want to always be in the opportunity where you have the ability to give them multiple choices. And that could be going with one cloud provider that offers, or it could be looking at multiple and saying, we have an Azure um, you know, strategy, we have a private cloud strategy, um, and we also have these managed services that we can surround ourselves with. So it really depends on the customer. Um, 
you know, 99% of the conversations we have do not center ourselves around one specific cloud anymore. It's really that multi-cloud strategy. So I would probably urge, you know, to do that jump and to kind of catch up is to really understand what your multi-cloud offerings are. Again, you don't have to own and operate those clouds. You don't have to necessarily go with one cloud provider, um, but you do have to have an answer for each of those cloud strategies. When, when a customer says to you, what do you think of this hybrid thing? You should have a very clear, definitive answer. Okay, perfect. Um, thanks very much, Rochelle. Um, that's all we have time for questions today. Um, so what I'd like to say is on behalf of Rochelle Coleman and Concerto Cloud Services, uh, the entire team, I would like to thank you for attending today's live webcast. Um, we obviously hope to see you at our next uh, part three of our live uh, six-part series. Um, and please go to uh, the KeepCom website forward slash webset webcasts and um, register for the next and upcoming um, webinars. Thank you and everyone have a fantastic day.